The Small Business Show, episode 191 for Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include Timing. For anyone billing their hours and more, timingapp.com slash small business. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Gusto, where at gusto.com slash SBS, you can sign up for a free three month trial of Gusto's refreshingly easy payroll benefits and HR. We will talk all about that shortly here. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. I'm excited to be here today talking about small business, man. Talking about small business. Yeah. yeah. It uh, seems like I love. It seems like that's all I ever talk about uh, some days. <laughs> but uh, well, everything, yes. you know, I, I we talk about the charmed life a lot. And I th- th- this was somewhat intentional, but I realized it was also possible years and years ago that I could take most of the things that were my hobbies and turn them into the things that I make money with. Now, that means I've I've accepted the fact that there are some headaches in my hobbies occasionally <laughs> um, sure. that have to do with, you know, the finance side of it and all of that. But, um, but that's, it's pretty good. But that also means that every aspect of my life is small business and tax deductible. So there you go. Yeah, that's, but it's good. I mean, I, mm. it, it depends on the crowd. I mean, if you're, if you're around other people that are small business owners and have had the experience, it's great because you can just see the excitement and you yes. can talk and, and, you know, share ideas and stuff like when we talk. But if, if you're not, you know, and those folks are probably not listening to this show. Uh, right. So I can say that, you know, if, if they're like a W2, you know, get a paycheck type thing or whatever, th- that's awesome too. But, there, and, you're and not going to have to that remain same... that way, right? I mean, yeah, because yeah, we have want a, to remain I, that way. I, yes. I, I wanted to just offer that clarification because I know we have a yes. lot of you folks that listen that want to do the next step. But right now, you're in a W two scenario, and I that's mean right. that that's like, listen, that's how I you know built up some funds to do my oh, yeah. first. I mean, yeah. it's you know, like yeah, you gotta. Yeah, well, we were just talking good. before the show about a about a W two situation for you, and then and oftentimes uh, if you're doing a side thing or whatever having a w2 is it can be helpful yes. for even if you're running other small businesses or doing other things um but uh you know the folks that are not interested in changing their uh their uh, position or, or living that charmed life and jumping into the small business world it's tougher to have that discussion in, in both ways one they may not quite understand some of the things that you're getting at so that the, the back and forth doesn't go but i also I, like I don't. I can talk to you, Dave, about small the stuff that's going on, and we go back and forth. But sometimes, if, when I talk like folks, I, I feel like, well, I don't want to brag. It's not like I'm bragging, yeah. but I'm actually just talking about what I'm doing. And I could have a conversation about, you know, the the four or five different businesses that I'm involved in right now. But you kind of have to to be careful who you're having that discussion with. I, I, I find and, that and, on both sides of it, from the bragging and then the, the what yeah. what seems like bragging and what seems like complaining. Where it's like, oh, I'm yeah. dealing with this yeah. headache or whatever. Like, I can tell you about it. And and it's like, most of the time, I like enjoy the headache almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's a, it's a puzzle. You're it's solving a puzzle. Problems. I'm yeah. solving the problem. And sometimes I get emotional about it. And it's okay. Like, it's good to be a little emotional. You, 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 you know, yeah. you wind up finding a solution. You've driven, right? That's right. good. But, yeah. it, but it, at the same time, you know, people that don't run their own businesses, don't hear it the same way often, not always, but often. And it's like, it's yeah. like, Oh, he's just, God, that guy's, you know, he pisses and moans yeah. or he brags. It's all he ever does. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess yeah. the thing is know your audience, know your audience. Right. <laughs> that's um, I had to say so. that to somebody this week, but that's a different <laughs> conversation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. If you're going to talk hey, contract uh, law, know your audience, but there you go. Know your audience. Yep. That's right. That's right. So, Today we're uh, we're going to talk about conflicts and uh, how to minimize, how to de-escalate uh, when you have problems, whether it's a customer, you know, a primarily customer based, but but also you know employees, uh, suppliers, vendors. I know you had a situation recently that kind of prompted some notes that 
uh, led us to uh, yeah. decide to do a show on that. So uh, l- l- let's jump into that topic. Sure. Yeah. So, I, right. I was on the phone with um, one of our partners, I will call them, it, it, you know, customer vendor, like sometimes that line gets really blurred um, depending on what yeah. business you're in. Right. But it's a, it definitely a partner. And and but I wasn't on the phone with him. I was having an email exchange and, you know, it was like, well, a couple of weeks ago, you know, we laid out the the structure. It was a, this is a longtime partner and we laid out the structure of kind of a new thing we were going to do. OK, great. Then it was, you know, a couple of weeks go by. We we do our thing. We generate something. and It's like, OK, cool. Now it's time to implement the first one. And I get this note back that says, yeah, you know, that like it's not really worth all the ha- headache to implement that first one for what it's worth. And I started writing the email, you know, of like, hey, dude, this isn't cool. We, you know, we we talked about this. We did the work. We're making this happen. Uh, You know, it's not the intention for this to be a one off thing. But yes, there's there is hard work to be done setting up a new thing. But I, you know, it was very easy for me to start writing that email emotionally and all that stuff. And I I don't know. I wrote whatever half of it or something. And I stopped. And it was like, okay, this is going to go in the wrong direction. Or this is already going in the wrong direction. Like yeah, I can, yeah, sure. I can continue to push it in the wrong direction and feel righteous and also lose, but I will be righteous in the end. And that's cool. Or I can pick up the phone and we can talk it out and I can explain, you know, what I can hear, what he's saying. He can hear what I'm saying. Hopefully, you know, there's enough respect there over the course of our, you know, long business arrangement. But even sometimes with people you just met talking to them on the phone when there's potential conflict, you know, you're at the very, very least. And it's usually way better than this. But at the very least, you are reminded that each other is human. And, you know, it's much it's much harder to be to get, you know, abrasive and vindictive or any of that stuff. It's like, no, like nobody chooses to act irrationally. What's the deal? And we talked it through and I said something that I think turned the conversation around. And and I, I said, you know, look, I understand that, that what you need to do to kind of get this thing rolling is a pain in the neck. I said, how can I take your headache away so that this deal makes sense and becomes in this scenario, you know, sort of a passive benefit for you. And, and that, that changed it. It was like, Oh, right. Ah, I see the end. Right. It's like, I had to paint the goal of this being a thing that you don't have to pay attention to because it's our job. And then, you know, you're good. And, and that was it. I turned it around. And then we wound yeah, up talking about great. our kids and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. really good. And, and I think that, you know, as I was looking up some notes uh, to things to talk about on the show, a, a quote popped up uh, um, in one article and I loved it. And it says, you know, one of the biggest pitfalls leading to conflict is misunderstanding intention. Yeah. And especially when you're communicating, uh, you know, in a written form via email or text. I mean, you really, you see that all the time because the other party isn't taking it maybe the way that you're intending it. And whether even if you're making a joke or you don't, you know, there is no nuance when you're sending that email. Not only necessarily. A, maybe only a negative, maybe yeah. a negative one. Yeah, there might be nuance <laughs> to neg- you, but it does yes, not translate. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think one of the things that, that really is important uh, in, in the situation you just mentioned is knowing when to pick up the phone. Um, that's really important. And uh, not only for you, but for your employees and, you know, your team members, partners, whatever, it is, you have to come up with, uh, you know, when do they know to pick up the phone and, and you have to set up like, look, when these, when a happens, just get on the phone, uh, when you have a problem with a customer. And oftentimes I found, even if the employee can't reach the customer, just the fact that they left a message yeah. and they can follow up yeah. the email and said, Hey, I tried to reach out to you. I really want to work this out. You know, that, that it goes a long way towards, Oh, they, they do want to make the extra effort. Cause let's face it. A phone call today is really like the extra effort, right? It totally is. Uh, well, and it shows yeah, that you're yeah. willing to be vulnerable, right? Email, yeah, yeah. I, like I really think there's something to that there because email is 
you control the entirety of your message. Now, you know, there's yeah, yeah. The, right. You know that you can mislead yourself with that, as we just discussed. But you you know, you're you're in your safe zone while you're writing your email. And I've done this where I'll you're, write an email and then delete it and pick up the phone. Like, no, OK, yeah. I've organized my yeah. thoughts. If you're going to do that, a pro tip, erase the person's uh, email address from the to field. <laughs> So that, that just yeah. in case muscle memory kicks in and you send it, it won't actually send. But but, you know, but that picking up the phone shows that you're willing to like you don't know how that person's going to respond. They may pick up the phone and you could get like a stream of fire at you, you, you know, sure. like it, who knows? And and yeah. and that shows like, yeah, like you said, it shows that you care and, and you're willing yeah, to you're willing to listen is what the phone does to me. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think that, um, you know, it, there, if you're going to communicate, let, I mean, let's face it, if you're in business, you, there's going to be lots of communication over email or chat or text or whatever it is, uh, uh, you know, your, your help system. Yeah. And I think it, you really have to work with people or maybe find people in your organization or, or you train yourself, you know, how to communicate with that written word. And, and oftentimes you really have to kind of be, uh, I would say you have to be over the top when communicating. I mean, things that you wouldn't necessarily do when you're talking on the phone or face to face, exclamation points. I mean, even, you know, dreaded emojis. I mm -hmm. think they have a place in a, in a business conversation to try to get the, the, those nuances and the sense of, uh, you know, Oh, I really do want to help you resolve this across to your customer, your vendor, your supplier, whoever it is, uh, yeah. your partner. Yeah, it's the um, I'm not trying to be a dick thing, you know. Yeah, like, that's here, right. I, here, there's that's a right. smile, like I'm trying, yes. or maybe it's not yes. that because maybe you are, but you are trying yeah. to help, right? You know, correct. Like, and correct. and I think that's well, it. And, you know, how can I help? Yeah. How right? What's the answer? And, yeah. Yeah, and it lends itself, I think, to uh, some templated responses for your team. And we've yeah. talked about that here before with Text Expander and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how powerful that is because you can, you know, as a manager, you can set the tone. And not only is it good for your customers, but your employees in your customer service department, they pick up on it too. So even when they're, you know, adjusting templates to fit the specific situation or writing their own emails, they know, Oh, we want to set the tone this way. Casual. Yeah. We're here yeah. to help, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Really you get to set, yeah. you get to choose, you know, um, and even your internal communications, like I've, I've noticed, you know, when I'll have like yeah. a sales rep or whatever, come to me and say, all right, I have a problem with that, you know, with this client or whatever. And, and, you know, they're being unreasonable. If I agree with that, like it's, it's one thing to agree and say, yeah, I see where you're saying they're being unreasonable, but let, you know, let's see, can we, is there a mutually acceptable slash beneficial path out? That's one way, right? The other is, yep. yeah, F that guy, he's being unreasonable. Like, it may oh, no, feel good, but <laughs> yes, yes. Be, be very yeah. care. I mean, that that is great for morale, but it sends yeah. in the short term, but it sends the message of it's OK to feel that way about our customers. <laughs> and maybe. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's not the right message. Yeah, probably not. And it's even like, uh, you know, talking about your customers offline, you know, when you're in the in yeah. the back, wherever we're having a discussion, if you're talking disrespectfully about those people or joking around or calling them idiots or whatever, you're definitely setting a tone and it's going to impact how your people interact and treat those customers. Absolutely. And uh, no matter how much you want to do it, you know, save it and do it to somebody, you know, talk to somebody else about it because, you know, you want all those people uh, treated with respect and, and you want to just remind your, you know, your your team. Hey, those are the folks that pay the bills. I mean, they're paying our salaries. So let's, let's do what uh, we can to encourage them to, to, you know, buy more, pay more, do whatever, use our services. more. Well, and what I found is that I can get really emotional about something and say, you know, F that guy or whatever. Uh, and then in the face of more information and, you know, learning and, and digging in or even just experience, which I guess is, you know, more information in a different way. Uh, like, I, I find that I'm OK walking back on that to myself. Right. Like, oh, maybe not 
you know, maybe that guy's not a problem. Like, you know what? He, he probably said the same thing about me. Uh, you know, there's middle ground here. We actually can work together. Sure. And oftentimes those relationships are the best ones because you sort of, you know, you, you have an emotional bond. It didn't start out as positive, but you know, yeah. emotions, emotion, I agree. time erodes the, the, um, the classification of it. Right. So you have this emotional bond, but when you say, you know, screw that customer, he's being unreasonable to one of your employees it may be far more difficult for them to walk that back than it is for you. I've certainly found that not with everybody, yes. but, but certainly, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say that. And then weeks later, it's like, oh yeah, we're doing this deal with so-and-so. And they're like, why? Like that person's yeah. awful. It's like, oh yeah, well, well that's changed. It's fine. You know? And, and it's, sometimes it's really hard to get them to you know, to like change with you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I and I was would try to tell the the customer service rep. I go, look, if you solve this customer's problem, they're going to be so loyal to us. You know, the best customers, I, I would argue, are not just the ones that bought something and or used your service or whatever it is, and and everything was fine and you never heard from them. The best customer is a customer that had an opportunity to interact with your co- your your company your small business again and had their question answered their problem solved whatever it is even something minor uh, those folks are far more loyal because you you stand out in their head that you yeah. solve that problem yeah. and uh, I think it's a it's a great opportunity uh, to take things that have been escalated and turn them into something really positive it is well and and remember yeah. you know even though you know you're a customer service ninja right and you're gonna handle yeah. it exactly right think about the customer that got whatever the service product it is from you that doesn't work at least doesn't work the way they think it's gonna work and now in your mind, you are a shyster, right? So yeah. they call up the shyster to yell at the shyster. And this is all in their head, right? They call up the shyster. They're yelling at the shyster. And the shyster says, oh, my gosh, that's awful. And then actually fixes the problem for them or or shows that they, you know, either maybe they can't or whatever. But, you know, it does something to change the customer's opinion. Now, you were the same customer service ninja all the way through, but not in their yeah. mind. So you transformed for them. And that is an amazing thing for people to watch. You know, they were sure you were going to say pound sand, man. But instead it was like, well, they're ready. Yeah, yeah, they're ready. Yeah. They're ready for you to, oh, these people are going to, you know, screw us. We got burned. This is a bad deal. I mean, uh, you know, they're ready for, they're ready for it. So they're ready. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's a great opportunity to change their mind and to, to flip things upside down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it can be easy if you just, you know, can take emotion and uh, well, I don't want to say take emotion out of it, although th- there's th- plenty of, of opportunities where that's the right thing. But it's sometimes it's just adding the human element in it and, and reminding yeah. everybody. And, and I have so, I have some more thoughts on that after uh, after the, you know we talk about our sponsors for a minute. Absolutely. Yeah. So our cool. first f- sponsor for today is Timing. We're at timingapp.com slash small business. You can take control of the time that you're spending doing things at your computer. Because as we always say here, that which is monitored is managed. Well, enter timing, your monitor. But it's an automatic monitor. Instead of making you stop and start timers, timer timing automatically tracks how much time you spend on each app on your Mac, on each document within each app, on each website inside of your web browser, it shows you exactly when you were working on what, when you slacked off, and how productive you've been <laughs> so that you can learn how to improve your productivity. You're not going to figure this out without information. Timing provides you with that information. But here's the cool part, because your work doesn't just happen when you're sitting down at your Mac, right? Right. That's why Timing's timeline automatically makes suggestions for filling in gaps. And it can ask what you did when you come back to your Mac. Like, hey, you were off for 20 minutes. What were you doing? Were you on the phone? Did you go have lunch? Right. This way, you capture everything. Right. You get to... um, uh, what's the right way to say this? Well, well, you get all the information, right? You monitor everything. And that way, it is managed. So... You get a deal. Go to timingapp.com slash small business and you can download their 14 day trial right out of the gate. Then when you're ready to buy, make sure to go back 
timingapp.com slash small business, and you save 10% when you purchase. Stop worrying about your time. Focus on doing your best work instead. Monitor, then manage. Timing at timingapp.com slash small business. Our thanks to Timing for sponsoring this episode. Our second sponsor is Gusto. Listen, payroll and benefits are hard, especially when you're a small business. You don't have time to be an expert in things like taxes and regulations and all of that stuff. And the reality is, if you've used them, you'll know old school payroll providers just aren't built for the way you work today, right? You listen to podcasts, you're on the go, you are a technology person. Well, Gusto is making payroll benefits and HR super easy for small businesses. Modern tech does all the heavy lifting. This is a thing that you know. They know it too. They put it all together. So it's super easy for you to get it right. You no longer have to be a big company to get great tech, great benefits, and great service for your team. Gusto says that 72% of their customers spend less than five minutes to run payroll. And four out of five actually reduce payroll errors. Don't believe it? You know what they told us to tell you? Google them. How many sponsors say, eh, if you don't think, if you don't believe that, Google us. You'll see. People love Gusto. How often do you actually love any company, let alone your payroll provider? So check it out. You get to go to gusto.com slash SBS. Not only do you support the show, but through that link, Gusto is offering you, our listeners, an exclusive limited time deal. You sign up today. You'll get three months for free once you run your first payroll. Just go to gusto.com slash SBS and our sincere thanks to Gusto for sponsoring this episode. All right, man, what's next? Those are, Go yeah, ahead. Those Sorry. are some huge, very, no, no, those are some very useful, uh, you know, services and apps for your small business. That's for sure. That's what we try to do here is, is yeah. we, we do cultivate this stuff um, so that, you know, we're, we're bringing you as, as much truly relevant things that we, as we can. And, and, you know, yeah. we say this all the time, but our, our, you know, our job and the reason we are paid by our sponsors to, to do this is to, teach you that these services exist and and encourage you to go learn more about them and that's why we have these links and all that stuff so once we've gotten you there then it, that's between you and them whether you sign up or you know however all that works but but our job is to get you there so we'd really appreciate it if you took a minute and visited the links for our sponsors thank you yeah cool so back back to conflict resolution and and you know making things you know de-escalating situations i i think one of the uh, I, I want to talk to this emotion thing again, but but before we do that, uh, uh, there's some folks that I've worked with or that have worked for me, and I have often have to remind them, and they're great people, and they have a strong sense of justice, like what is right and what is wrong. And and I think when you're in the <laughs> – to be successful in customer <laughs> service, you have to get that out of your head. Yeah. Because – it doesn't matter who's right or wrong in that situation. What you're trying to do is resolve the conflict, resolve the problem. You're making dis business decisions here, yeah. not winning. Don't don't you know? Make sure your employees, your and, and yourself, you're all in on this. You know, get your sense of justice out of it. Get your ego out of it, if you want to call it that. Whatever sure. it is. Um, I mean, obviously, unless you're really somebody's trying to take advantage of you, of course. But right, I, I right. would argue. The, the vast majority of the time, 90% or even more, you just have to solve the problem and think of it from a business standpoint. And I learned th this, you know, over and over again when dealing with large and very successful companies, oh. like companies like, like Amazon. Yeah. I can remember, you know, we, we did a lot of business in the, on the Amazon and the marketplace and that kind of thing. And I would see things escalating and customer service issues and Amazon's pat, patent response was, well, that's a business decision you need to make. If you don't want to give this person a refund or you want to really, you know, plant your flag in over this issue, you will have to deal with the repercussions, which could be, you know, bad feedback, getting, getting, put, uh, you know, suspended from the marketplace, all this kind of stuff. They said, we're, we're not going to tell you what decision to make, but that is a business decision. And I think that sense of justice and what's right or wrong you just have to get that out of the equation. Yeah. And of course so, you're saying this to yeah. someone that, that uh, I, I am well. very much a, in <laughs> always in pursuit of justice. And the problem are, is yes. I've had some success 
with that. That's actually surprised yeah. attorneys in the past, but I have had a little bit of success pursuing justice. I've also had some failures, far more failures than successes pursuing justice. But, uh, but you're totally right. Like even when I've been in those scenarios where it's like, okay, here it is. I'm going to, I'm going to prioritize justice here. I am at least aware that I, what I am actually making is a business decision. And yeah, it, that's yeah right. and, and you have to at least factor that in um, before you do it. And, and I agree with you and Amazon that 99, yeah. perhaps even a hundred percent of the time it's pursuing justice is, is not the right business decision. <laughs> no, uh, it's not. <laughs> it's not. But, but yeah. uh, sometimes it, you know, it's okay. Like you just have to reconcile. What are the risks? Okay. I want to pursue justice. Yes, it's probably going to work. It's going to waste a lot of my time. Uh, I might get to the end and feel like I won. I probably won't actually get anything out of it. I probably will lose future business with whomever it is against I'm pursuing justice. Um, and, you know, like, is that enough? I think that's enough. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just got to yeah. be self-aware about it. And, I, and I say that I'm in the middle of, of this right now. It, it, largely, I'm pursuing justice over employment law. And that's sort of the, sort of a thing that's important to me. So, you know, it's fine. But I'm aware that because I like to do the right thing for employment law and I just don't want to be involved in anything that's bad with employment law. And, I, you know, I feel like sure. that, as a small business owner, that actually isn't a bad story to tell my employees. Right. I mean, it also yeah, makes me makes feel sense. good. Makes sense. I'm 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 right. certainly, you know, rationalizing with that last one there. But but it's true. Right. Like, oh, this guy actually cares and he puts his money where his mouth is. And OK, yeah. like, that's cool. You know. So, but in, but as I said when we were talking about it, so in in that case, you're kind of more the customer. So, it is. I mean, it's I, a right. I, I someone's get that. someone's misclassifying me. That's yeah, right. Yeah. It's yeah. very common for the customer to pursue justice. Uh, that is true. And, you know. So yeah. So what I think you have to do for yourself and for your your team and your employees, you know, make sure that they have the tools to quickly solve problems. Try to avoid escalating them, and because you only get so many chances before your customer or your, you know, vendor, supplier, partner, whoever it is, is going to be going to be upset. So you, you've got to have a clear uh, and, and really well communicated uh, set of tools to your, to your people. And I think the first one is, you know, what are the guidelines for solving problems? Yeah. And, you know, these may be some, some policies, but Hey, this is how we do it here. So they know, okay, great. I, I take these steps. This is how I respond. And this is what I can do. I've got some autonomy in solving problems. If you're, if you say, look, anything that's under 50 bucks, just do it or a hundred, whatever that number is. It depends on your business, maybe a thousand dollars. Sure. Know. Um, and you want to resolve problems uh, quickly and and make sure that they don't have to stop and go ask permission on how to solve it. Um, and and I think one of the the really important things to tools to give to your you know yourself whoever's dealing with customer service is the you know giving permission to apologize even if you're not even if you're right and a quote in you know yeah in yeah, yeah justified you, you can yes. yeah <laughs> you can say hey oh I'm really sorry that things haven't gone right here. Because yeah. you probably are, right? Yeah. And you don't have to say, oh, I'm sorry we screwed up if you didn't screw up. Or I'm sorry that product didn't work because you didn't know what the hell you were doing <laughs> when you used it. I mean, there's, of course, all those kinds of things. But, hey, I'm sorry that that we're here right now, but I'm going to help you get things solved. And when, you know, another tool is is helping these pe everybody understand communication skills and words to use and phrases to use. You want to use phrases that are calming, like, hey, we're going to resolve this quickly. We're going to figure this out together. Uh, I'm committed to making this work, you know, and you want to not use words like, well, our policy does this. Yeah. Uh, and and you, don't want to, you don't want to be vague. You don't want to say, I'm pretty sure, maybe, not our fault. I mean, this kind of thing. Just, just don't use those things. Just, uh, yeah. just, and, just, and don't tell it. And I'm saying like, as you're saying this, I'm thinking about this current thing that I'm dealing. It's just, it's a stupid headache, but whatever um, right. that, I, that I was dealing with. And, you know, you're saying a lot of the things that, that they have said to me. And one thing that actually was communicated to me, which it, it, this, again, this is a great lesson to, to experience this, even though it's sort of crappy and a time waster, but it's not because here we are was yeah. they, they communicated how, unimportant I am to them. Like that's terrible. Like, yeah, they said, <laughs> I think you are 
overstating your importance in the grand scheme of things here. I'm paraphrasing. So as to that's a know, failure. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It's like, really? Like, I, I yeah. certainly I could look at it and see that. But you don't want to say that aloud or in an email no. or something to like, that's just not going to go your way. <laughs> Yes, never, that's correct. Never, that's correct. Yeah. never. No. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you talked about uh, emotion, um, you know, before. And, and I think that maybe a better word for it is empathy and getting that empathy across. And, and I guess you're showing emotion. And, yeah. And so the customer understands that, hey, I'm 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 really sorry. I'm having to deal with, you know, we're having to deal with this, but we're going to get it taken care of. And that really helps to build trust. Um and, you know, when they're when you're working with those customers, you got to downplay the parts of because, you know, there's certain things you're not going to do. Right. Right. You're not going to just do something crazy because the customer demands it and everything. But Correct. play play up and focus on what you are able to offer, because if people uh, feel like they're getting taken care of and they feel they get the sense that you do care and you have empathy for their problem and they, then you're committed to resolving it. They're usually pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and it comes back to, we've talked about here on the, uh, the show a number of times and we'll put it in the show notes. It's the, the two token, uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> concept of customer service by, you know, Jean-Louis Gasset. And, you know, that, that concept in a nutshell is that there's only two, two things that can happen when you have a customer service issue. It's your, two tokens, if you will. And the one token is someone's really, really upset and and there's and they think it's a big problem. And the other token is, ah, this is not not a big deal. So if a customer comes to you for a problem and you take the token that this is not a big deal, guess what they're going to take? The other token that says, this is a huge deal. This is a so huge deal. You, yeah, you yeah. get to so choose. You be the one. Yeah. yeah, you get to choose right at the outset, but you can only choose once. You know, really. That's it. it right. It, you it, cannot it, you yeah. cannot go back on your choice, no. especially if so, you choose it's not a big deal. Although, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you can admit yeah, I guess you can, if you re, you, you yeah. review it, yeah. you can say, yeah. "Hey, I'm really sorry. You know, I yes. I started this the wrong way." Uh, you can walk it back. Yeah. Look, here we are and like couldn't possibly have more egg on my face. Let's right. let let if you may, if I may, would you please let me start over here? You know, and then, and but you have to be yeah. sincere when you do that. Of course, I I like to say when you you were saying before about uh, how you know you have to be willing and show people like show empathy, but also here's what I can do for you. I in those scenarios, I always say you know when the customer is asking for something that is truly unreasonable or simply impossible or something you are not willing to do. Uh, right. I always say, remember meatloaf, right? I'll, I, I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. Right. <laughs> right. And it's, but <laughs> yeah. remember yeah. meatloaf, you know, and, yeah. and because, yeah. because there's, because if you say that to someone, like I would, I really want to, to turn this around from you for you. I really want to make this right, but I can't do that. It, yeah, you know, like it, it shows that you're, you know, you're still willing to hear other ideas, but like we need to take that one thing that you're demanding off the table. You know, it's just yeah. like, I can't do that. I can't do yeah. it. You know, and okay. That's right. And, and I, and I think that, you know, uh, another thing that your people or even your, yourself, you need to have is what is the clear path if things do escalate? Because sometimes it, it is going to escalate and sometimes it's just the wrong person matchup and you need to get them to another employee or whatever it is. You know, who gets involved next without some delay? Uh, you know, if you got to work with work things out. And if you're the person that gets escalated to, I would suggest you try to resolve it with the employee in the, uh, you know, offline, if you will, or in the without, background. Yeah, without the customer let, or vendor involved. Yeah, yeah. Without the customer. And then let that same employee go back with your guidance and try to resolve it. Because not only, uh, I think the customer feel will feel better, but you're you're teaching that employee, uh, or you know, partner, whoever it is. Oh, this is how I would suggest we do it. Or you know, oftentimes you just have to ask them, "What do you want to do?" You know, and and people get. Oh yeah. What happens if That's you have the best if question. you have loyal? Yeah. 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 What do you want to do if you have loyal employees? Which I hope you do. They're, they feel strongly about fighting for your business, right, and not giving up things. So 
sometimes you have to talk them off the edge and say, hey, it's okay. Let, let's let's do it this time for the customer. Let me show you where we kind of screwed up or whatever. And they'll they'll pick up on that. And because because you need to have that flexibility in in uh, you know policies can be really tough for your customers and for your employees. You need to have good ones, but they can't be so inflexible that it drives everybody crazy. Right. You know. Right. Right. You yeah. You need to have limits yeah. because you can't give away the keys every day. But Yep. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I know we're running a little long, but I I do want to mention a couple last things. I I think it's also important and realistic to realize that some people are just not meant to do customer service. There are some folks. Yes. And it's okay. Yes. Maybe they're good at something else. It's okay. Um, But you need to make that decision. And, you know, people that are really good at customer service seem to be, um, you know, they understand that two token concept. And they also, you know, Scott Adams uh, talks about it a lot about pacing and and persuasion. And what you're trying to do is is pace the customer. If they're upset, let them know. Hey, I'm upset too that this this happened, and I'm going to get it resolved for you. Um, get on the same side of the table. It's one thing you like yeah. to say a lot, Dave. Yeah. You know, what can we all agree with? What can we agree with to start? Yeah. What's the foundation that, of this? Yeah. Yeah. You can start the whole resolution, uh, you know, de-escalation thing with what can we agree with? And it might be as simple as, you know, we both agree that it sucks that we have to deal with this. Okay, great. Okay, cool. Like, agreed. I I know that that sounds trite and and cliche, but trust me when I say it works as long as it's true. You know, but well, maybe it's maybe yeah. yeah, maybe you can't even agree about this situation, but maybe you, like you said, Dave, you you wound up talking to this person about kids or whatever, yeah. and you had something in common. Right. What is it that you have in common with this person that you can then base? Uh, you know, oh wow, man, I've been in that situation before. I bought product X and I couldn't get it figured out. So let me try to help you get it done. You know, that little nugget that they go, oh wow, this person's just like me. They're a human. They want to get this figured out. You know, that that's great. Yep. So and, and um, I will say one, of, one know, last thing, it, if you can, especially if it, it seems like you're not agreeing on anything, even if you can find one tiny little thing where you can pause, let out a sigh and say, you know what? You're right. Like that, that in and of itself is huge in one of these scenarios. Like give up a little, yeah, I agree. you got to give up a little, yeah. you know, cause it's a negotiation that we're talking about here. It's just a different type of negotiation than say a deal or, you know, a new partnership or whatever. But you know that, yeah, you know what? You're right. Like it shows yeah. that you have an open mind. That kind of thing. Yeah, it's right. Pretty good. You're going to get it. Yeah. yeah. So lot, lots of good tips here. We'd love to hear your tips, things that you've done that have uh, resolved conflicts or tools that you give to your employees. Feedback at businessshow.co or visit the small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. Tell your story. Ask your questions. That's it. Thanks, Thanks for listening, folks. Thank you so much. Keep living that charmed life, will you? See you next week. 